Hi guys, it's Paul from emodels.co.uk. A um, bit of a review test today. Um, the Mr. Hobby Ranger paints. Uh, I haven't used these at all uh, myself, so it's a first for me. And as emodels have just recently started stocking the uh, a lot of the Mr. Hobby range, um, I thought it quite fit to test them. Um, my current build at the minute is um, the Academy F22. And all the colour call outs are in the Mr. Hobby colours, so obviously it brings her all together to make um, use of them to show what they can do, what they like, and hopefully, um, uh, as everybody keeps telling me, they'll spray and paint really nice. Um, so, what you get, very typical of the Tamiya range of acrylic paint, uh, I zoom in a little bit, um, typical, it's a 10 milliliter bottle just as Tamiya is, if I get a Tamiya bottle. So very similar size. Um, water-based, these aren't water-based. Um, I believe you can thin these with water. Um, with Tamiya, you're using their X20A, which is isopropanol alcohol, I believe, with a retarder in. I think I said that correct. Um, so like I say, these can be thinned with water, I believe, but today I'm going to be using Mr. Colour Thinner. Um, hopefully 50-50 mix and we'll see what they spray like. Um, so yeah, uh, range of colours. Um, the most important one they do for me, uh, well there's two actually they do, the FS colours, so a lot of modern jets. And they also do RLM colours, uh, World War II, uh, Luftwaffe colours, uh, etc. So you, you're getting a very good match with the paint, which a lot of manufacturers do struggle with. Um, the only other RLM colour I can find that's any good is the extra acrylics uh, by Hannant. Um, they're a bit of a bucket to spray, they're very good, um, but they're not an easy paint to spray. Uh, the Vleo model, uh, I don't find them a great match. Nice paint, um, but they don't they don't really match the colours brilliantly, uh, as I showed in ME109 build when I was comparing the RLM, I think it was 02. So, Definitely a first to see these and what they're like. Um, so what I'm going to be using, like I said, is uh, I've got a little uh, Mustang I use to, well, I'm starting to use as a test plane. So what I've done, I've primed half one wing in Vallejo primer and left one bare. So we can see what a spray is like onto primer and just onto a bare wing. Uh, I've also got a few parts of that Academy F22 kit I've just shown. Uh, I've got a cockpit sort of a seat and the two side weapon bays to spray. So we'll go to the spray booth and we'll try these. Right, okay, so we're over at the spray booth now. Um, I've got several parts to spray. Uh, these are off my F22, the Academy kit um, I'm currently building. So we've got three colours to use. We've got um, flat white, uh, grey, which is FS36231, and flat black as well. Um, so Several different colours needed for several different parts, so we just separate and keep these ones because these are going to be the flat black, um, which is the ejector seat and the instrument panel. So I've loaded up uh, my airbrush, you can see it in there, um, about a millilitre, if that, of the flat black, uh, and I've roughly thinned it 50 50 with the uh, Mr. Colour Thinner. Um, so this is the first time for me spraying it, so. Um, if it goes wrong, you know why. So, um, on with the spray booth. Just check our flow on the uh, paper. To me, it looks a little thin. I'm not put too much thinner in. Uh, it sprays okay. Do a bit more of that. Yep, spot on. Right, okay. So, we're running a 25 psi like normal, um, just the way I spray. Um, Tamiya's and Vallejo's etc. So let's see how we spray on here. I think I have done a little bit thin but it's still spraying very nicely. It's very nice indeed actually. It's a very nice flat black as well. Uh, not one hint of shine there at all. Down really nice, uh, and even though to me that looks too thin, 
and it's spraying absolutely beautifully. Um, like I said before, um, I know it says what well, I've, I've read somewhere that can be thinned with water. I'll always try and use the appropriate thinner because they normally contain more than just the base of the paint and then we've got a retarder in, etc. Um, just sprayed a little bit too much of it, a little bit, not a run, but a bit of a wet patch. Dried off lovely just as Tamiya does. Very, very nice. No problems there, so that's a eject the seat done. Got to one side. Instrument panel. I would say these have all been primed in Vallejo uh, polyurethane primer as well. Um, a good base for a lot of paint as long as you're not cellulose based. So there we go, there's the instrument display sprayed. So again, to one side. Let's get our ejector seat back and have a quick look how it's looking. Very, very nice flat bar. Even the Tamiya flat black isn't that flat. That's really nice. You can see it there at all. Nice coverage. Nice even spray. Really does spray very nice. So that's that one out of the way. So I'm going to quickly put this into the uh, cleaning pot and then we'll switch colours. The one thing I will try is on my usual cleaner which is a mix of a bit of a X28 down here a normal concentrated screen wash and we'll see where it cleans up like so my cleaner method is a bit of cleaner in there finger over the uh, needle and a bit of back pressure as you can see the froth bubbling up at the top that gets the majority out of the cup. Get the cup clean. You know we get left with a residue then. Catch that in there. And then for this one, put a bit of the extra. Sorry, just a colour thinner in there. And then get the brush in. And that, that clears up instantly. I know a lot of people don't like to uh, use back pressure on them to clean them, but I found it works very well. And I've very rarely had to strip this airbrush down, or any of them to be honest. There we go, that's now, if you can see it in there, spotless. So, the thinner does work very well. So, next colour, uh, we'll go with the FS Grey, that one, the cockpit tub itself. Bit of a shape, just the same as with Tamiya. A little bit more this time. I'd say that's nearer a millimeter in there now. A little bit thinner on a pipette. Tammy is there is which was thoroughly thoroughly mixed. Just running off nicely on the side. Right. This, this cockpit, the back section is supposed to be black, so I'll spray it grey and then go back over later once I've matched with the black.
Now this time I didn't thin it as much. The consistency in the cup looks spot on. I think it needs to be that little bit thinner like I had it before. It's a little bit grainy there. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Give it a stir again. So, for me, it appears to be needing to be a little bit thinner than I will thin the likes of Tamiya. But it does spray very, very nice. Super smooth. Absolutely, really smooth paint. Covers very well. And even though to me that's very thin in the cup, it's not running. Uh, needle of the airbrush. It's absolutely spotless, so there's no spitting. Very, very nice paint. That colour is nice as well. There we go. Another part nicely sprayed. Again, you can see where it's a bit wet. If I can catch it in the light at the back. Come to her, you should see that dry. To me it sprays just like Tamiya acrylic, it just, I think it needs to be a little bit thinner than you'd normally spray Tamiya. There we go, there's a cockpit done. So another colour change, we're going on to flat white. So I'm going to pop this back in, should we get the right colour. Yeah. No point in wasting good paint. There's no harm, you just put the thinner back in there. You're going to thin the paint anyway. As long as you're not chopping and changing your thinner, it's going to have no detrimental effect to the paint at all. So again, just give the airbrush a quick clean. And the airbrush is spotless. Maybe you can see right down the bottom one. So, spot on. Give that a wipe as well. So again, clear up. No problem. So we've got the weapons bay, we've got the side weapons bay. So we need the flat white. for a thin mix straight away this time. It's really, really thin and the colour for me, but... I said it's already been primed in white. So, quite hard to see. where I'm actually painting, but... You can see in there that it's wet, so it is taking it well.
Okay, so we've seen the spraying of smaller parts. We've just done a cockpit, an ejector seat, uh, a couple of weapons bays. We want to something slightly bigger. It's not the biggest plane in the world. It's only a 172. But it gives an idea how it sprays over a larger surface area. Like I say, they've been out for a while. I haven't used these whatsoever. So it's good for me as well to see how they spray. I'm doing it as we go on the fly. So you see what happens for me. Um, I'm going to be using uh, Mr. Hobby 304 uh, Olive Drab. Um, as you can see, if you can pick it up on the camera, half this wing has been sprayed in Vallejo White Primer, uh, but allowed to dry. It's a polyurethane primer. Great stuff. Uh, as you can see, it's laid down very nice, flat, smooth. Um, I'll spray this. We'll also continue on to the um, bare section of the wing, probably over the other side. And I've also got some Alclad um, black gloss there, so we'll spray over that, see how it sprays onto that, because that's a smoother, glossier surface. Um, the reason I'm doing the primer and non-primer is, um, myself, like other people, you don't prime every single little part. I only tend to prime bigger parts. Um, like the cockpit and what have you, and small if it's a single piece, I won't always prime it unless I'm doing it with a load of other bits together. I won't pry, put primer in an airbrush to have to clean it to airbrush one tiny little part. So it gives an idea how the paint will spray onto bare plastic as well as onto a uh, primed surface. Once it's dry, I can see how resilient it is to scratches and what have you, uh, and whether, you know, obviously primer makes a difference. I think it does, I think it gives a smoother finish and a better base, but. This is a good test for a paint to see how it sprays onto bare plastic. So like I say, Olive Drab, number 304. I'll thin it again with Mr. Hobbies, Mr. Thinner, uh, as we did the last test. Same pressure, uh, and we'll see how it sprays. So, on with the booth. The airbrush has been cleaned, so give that a good shake. Set with Olive Drab, that's for sure. Nice colour. Um, Same as last time, probably well, half a millimetre back. You don't need a lot, it goes a long way. Put that to one corner. So, I'm going to go exactly the same as I was doing before, which I, it's a thinner mix than Tamiya Normal is. So, I'm going to get some up there. Old stirring tool. Really does look thin. If you can see that stirrer, see how thin it is at the, the near the uh, top rather than at the bottom. If that was Tamiya, that would spray. It would spider like everything everywhere. But in this, it does appear. Well, my finding to find it likes to be sprayed a lot thinner. So check the flow as normal. I always try and write my name. It shows that uh, it's thinning up the paint, and then give it a good a good blast. So. As you can see, colour cups loaded. So we'll do the primed section first. So just like before, it's getting a rather gritty effect on it, which to me says it's not thin enough. So I'll add a little bit more thinner. I'll try it again. There again. There we go, that's better. As well that was doing, because it's spraying grainy, you can see the overspray. If you're trying to spray tight lines, it won't let you do it. Um, I mean, I'm at a high pressure as well, which doesn't help. Um, so, if I continue on to the bare plastic, you see what it's like. I continue on back, that's had a couple of seconds to dry. Always handy having a little test plane. Uh, model's gone slightly wrong or something you weren't quite happy with. Um, 
of trying out new paints or what have you because it gives you a real world of what it's actually like. This was uh, fixing it's a new kit as well. Um, but I had, I had fitment issues getting the cockpit in. Wasn't totally happy with the way the um, top seams had gone. So for six quid, I'll buy a new one, start again. And this was one of my new test subject now. So you'll probably see a lot of this over the coming videos. So there we go, nice even coverage now. Get the front of these edges. So there we go, we've got all over the primed surface and the unprimed. No problem there at all. Spray very nice and smooth again. No runs. Again, the needle spotless, which is always nice to see. So no spitting, no collecting there, nothing. And again, faultless paint, very smooth. Sprays absolutely beautifully. Definitely needs to be thinner, a lot thinner. Uh, we do this side as well. This is totally unprimed, so you can see what this does. Same rules with um, as if you're laying down primer. Give it a mist coat, let it dry for a bit. Because it's acrylic, it dries very, very fast. Come back slightly heavier. Don't try and cover all in one go, because all you'll get is a run. Let that dry a couple of seconds again. They always cut to air. And then once you're happy, that's dry, coming a little bit, a little bit thicker. Super, super smooth paint. I really am impressed how smooth that is. Um, I can see me buying more of these. They are very, very nice to paint. No wonder people rave about them. Very easy to spray as well. Um, very nice. 